Hello everyone and welcome back to the Journeyman Project Pegasus Prime. Last time we got an oxygen mask, um, but we couldn't fill it up in the same time zone like we did in the original game, so we have to jump back and find another source of oxygen somewhere that we can use in order to fill up our oxygen mask. It could be in one of two areas. It could be in 2112 or it could be 2310. Let's begin with 2310. It sounds like it might have a better idea because it's the World Science Center. They might have some sort of oxygen tank somewhere. I don't know. It's just a hunch. You are about to travel to the World Science Center in New Sydney, Australia in the year 2310. In the corrupted history, an influential scientist, Dr. Enrique Castillo, is assassinated during his speech at the Symposium on Alien Contact. Without his impassioned arguments for the benefits of sharing culture with other races, the sentiment of the scientific community toward alien contacts swings to an isolationist attitude drastically altering history. Well, Agent 5, you have just been shot with a dart coated with an unknown toxin. Your vital signs are beginning to fluctuate. Quite the welcome. It is essential that you first establish the poison's molecular structure before you attempt to discover an antidote. To determine the molecular structure of the poison, find a compound analyzer. Once you have used the compound analyzer to determine the molecular structure of the poison, find a compound synthesizer that will allow you to replicate the specific antidote. Alright, well that's uh, quite a welcome that we just got, and that's going to be helpful, but it's not going to be helpful if we don't remove this thing. Your biosuit was able to filter out all but seven micrograms of the toxin. The substance is a lethal neurotoxin and must be neutralized quickly or you will perish. Seems a little bit drastic, but if you take a look at our energy bar through our entire time here, which is going to be limited, it's draining really fast. Ice compound to be analyzed into the analysis chamber. It's nice that this room is going to be very convenient to us, because she was saying, look for a compound analyzer, and here it is. First, let's take a look at our tranquilizer dart before we get rid of it. Blue liquid. Okay. Nuclei compound analyzer SL100A. Assessing polarity. Checking for nuclear emissions. Evaluating molecular structure. Scanning polypeptide chains. Chemical complex dimahydronate based liquid tranquilizer. Sending analysis information to molecular compositor. Interesting that most of the comp the most of the liquid contents are mostly water. That's pretty diluted, I would say. And in terms of diamond hydronate, isn't that used in like mild tranquilizers? Nuclear Laboratories Molecular Synthesizer Interface SL one hundred C dash one. Now completing download of molecular information from compound analyzer. Diamond hydronate is a relaxant commonly found in sleep and health aids. In combination with other drugs, its effects can be fatal. It is used as a base for many different forms of tranquilizers. There are antidotes known for several diamond hydronate based tranquilizers, all of which are members of the Thorazine family. Okay, he said fatal, although the text said overpowering. I feel like there's a little bit more of a pressing matter that they try to push into this. I feel like the compound is more so that we pretty much collapse 
and pretty much almost go into a coma state, more than actually killing us fatally. But we need to still deal with this. Molecules have been pre-programmed. These molecules are stable. Variations must be selected manually. In the event that an unstable compound is being created, you will have to begin again. After all three molecules have been designed, an antidote can be synthesized. Base molecule number one. Alright, remember this puzzle? It's exactly the same as it is in Turbo. It's all trial and error still. Just keep going and see what actually you can do. Exactly the same combination of six Base molecules. Molecule number two. O, J, I, A, C, Y. Base molecule number three. And one more time for good measure. It's, it's the exact same. It's, nothing's new about it. Three stable thorazine base molecules have been designed. Building base molecules. Bonding additional molecules. Synthesis complete. The synthesized compound will appear in the molecular synthesizer. Alright, there we go. Did it! There's our compound synthesizer! Hey! I like that it makes the antidote, the test tube, and the cork to go with it. Look at that, or the stopper anyways. Probably wouldn't use cork in the 24th century. Mmm. Delicious. But yeah, look at all the energy we lost. I was taking my time, too. There we go. Our Thorazine Antidote. Well, now that that quick and annoying thing is out of the way... You are in the World Science Center in New Sydney, Australia, in the year 2310. Your mission is to prevent the assassination of the pro-alien delegate, Dr. Enrique Castillo. As much as I would like to say that as my mission right now, I have a little bit more of a minor issue to solve. It's finding some oxygen. You are in the Molecular Biology Laboratory in Research Wing S4C of the World Science Center, New Sydney, Australia. Well, quite convenient that we have the coordinates for exactly this place. Alrighty then, let's take a look around at the things that we did not look around at uh, previously. Including a strange hologram of what looks to be kind of like the robot that we saw on Mars. Mm. As well as cacti. That's also nice. Over here, though, is a bunch of different interesting things. Uh, let's take a look. Let's get that out of the way. I don't think... <laughs> Transferring argon from canister to reservoir. Ready to discharge argon into smart alloy chamber. Okay, I just pushed a button. I didn't. I didn't want this to actually be a thing that happened, but I guess we get to see what happens to um, smart alloy when argon is put in Start. it. Whoa! All right. So who was it that? invented the smart alloy so that anything could change into anything else. Like this, uh, bust of somebody? I'm not sure who that could be, but he turns into a lamp. <laughs> Alright, let's take the argon and put it in here. Hmm. Interesting result. It just kind of stopped. It is now safe to retrieve your key card and disengage the argon canister. I, okay, don't mind if I do then. Two inventory items, all nice and for us now. Except that our inventory is looking mighty full. We still have that beverage beverage glass, jeez. Alright, let's see what we picked up here. Security level 8 key card. Or Elliot Sinclair. Hmm, interesting. The guy in the bust in the TSA who invented the uh, first time machine. 
Pegasus? Hmm. What else do we get? We got that Argon canister. Sadly, it doesn't have any Argon anymore. High pressure gas canister designed to hold Argon. Standard industry specification that dates back to the 22nd century. If it is not broken, don't fix it, I guess. Otherwise, there's that. Learn something new. Otherwise. Dr. Sinclair, your messages have been forwarded to your office. Aw, oh, I can't watch the messages here. Dang. It looks like Sinclair was the last person to be in this room before, I guess, the conference. And we have a canister here. There's also one here that looks exactly the same, which we can also grab. Oh no! Not our beverage glass! No, the humanity! <laughs> yeah, so when we are over encumbered with um, inventory items, the non-essential ones, and it's interesting what they consider to be non-essential, it depends on where you are and what you're doing, it gets removed from your inventory. You can go back technically and pick it up, except for the beverage glass, because, you know, that's back in your apartment, but oh well. Pretty much the same thing, except that it stores liquid nitrogen instead of argon. Hmm. Wonder what we could do with that. Alright, well, if this is going to be a lab, there's argon and nitrogen, but, uh, no oxygen. So I guess that we need to, I guess, look elsewhere, fortunately. But we did pick up some interesting new items, which I think is a plus. So, if this is not where we're supposed to be in order to find oxygen, let's recall. Good that we're able to still recall to the Pegasus. Nothing weird has happened. Alright, if it's not in these two areas, it must be in NORAD 6 in 2112. Let's go! You are about to travel to the underwater military installation NORAD 6. In the altered history, an unauthorized missile launch leading to a nuclear explosion over the world unification talks ends the peace conference in Gorbistan, creating a resurgence of the nuclear proliferation of the 20th century. Your mission is to restore the proper flow of history by stopping the missile launch from occurring. Hello to you too. Warning. Detecting trace concentrations of a sleeping gas in the atmosphere. Well shoot, okay. I'm gonna have to do something about that quick. You actually don't have to be as quick as you think in terms of getting rid of the sleeping gas, actually. For instance, we can look at some wonderful hints from the AI. Agent 5. You must find some method of filtering out the foreign chemical in the air, or you will soon be rendered unconscious. Examination of your current inventory and biochips is recommended. The oxygen mask found in the Mars colony has two functions. It allows the wearer to breathe oxygen, and it utilizes a particle filter to remove all foreign elements from the air. Well, that's good to hear from you, AI. So let's go ahead and get that air filter on. And bam! We're good to go. Sleeping gas, not an issue. If you're quick enough and you're, I'm not actually futzing around like I usually do, you can actually go and solve the sleeping gas problem quick, quick enough that you don't actually need the oxygen mask at this point. Alright, let's get our bearings in terms of NORAD. 
we have our mission here, which is to get rid of, um, or stop the missile launch that is going to happen against Gorbistan. So, this screen here is going to pretty much overload us with information in a not a really good way. So we pretty much get a whole bunch of different maps and idea maps and kind of views of everything, kind of what it looks like. Most of the guards are knocked out because of sleeping gas. And you also get to see a bunch of different places including the command centers for the missile launches, the sub docks, and other things. This is almost too zoomed in in order to make it really work. But we can also get our bearings, sort of. We are now in Alpha Base. We are right next to the ventilation primary feed hub with the electrolysis pipeline and all that, looking at a screen. We also have a bunch of different maps in terms of what it kind of looks like in Alpha Sector, where we need to get to the submarines and right off of the submarines is actually a command station in order to either com confirm the, the launches or override the launches. They're apparently in two different places, which is weird. However, if we are in need of an alternate terminal, we can also go over to Delta Sector, which also has the same pretty much layout as Alpha Sector has. The problem is, is that NORAD-6 is made out of four different bases. We are in Alpha Base. However, there's also Beta, Gamma, and finally, Delta. Delta is the furthest away of all of the bases in terms of the underground area that encompasses NORAD-6 as a whole. How do we get to Delta from Alpha? Well, we need to use the communications pipeline right here and follow this exact kind of area here and that's where the subs come in. It, it, it's going to be a whole lot in order to actually get to that override terminal and hopefully we don't actually have to go there, but I don't have my hopes up. So there we have it. There is pretty much our briefing for what we have to do in terms of NORAD. I don't really want to watch more of that. But that's going to be for another time, because, of course, what are we here for? We're here for some oxygen, not to stop some missiles. That can happen at any time. <laughs> kind of wondering here, yeah, so what is this thing that is connected to the intake valve? Whatever it is, it is affecting every single sector of this place. Um, it also has this weird kind of symbol on it. Hmm. Well... What we can do is just grab it and take it with us. Oh no, our journeyman key! Where do we throw it? What do we do? It may be advisable to leave the gas canister in its current position. Mm, it might be, but as you can see, all the warnings are off, so you can actually not be annoyed by all the warnings in the background. Alright, there we go. Sleeping gas detected in the nozzle. Main tank, auxiliary tank. Hmm. And it's also made out of a smart alloy that was not invented until 2307. Huh. Okey dokey! It's not from this time period. This is a bad thing. But now that we have this and have a free intake valve, we can either intake thing, or we can dispense at the same time. What does it mean by dispense? It means that it can give us different gases, which is a super helpful thing. So let's bring up our inventory. In terms of our gases that we're able to get, we're either able to get argon, carbon dioxide, helium, pure oxygen, or pure nitrogen. Guess what three items actually give us a whole lot of help in order from this dispense mode? Well, first because it's right next to where I was, is our nitrogen canister. So let's do, uh, do our chemistry. There we go. And with that, we now have a full charged canister of nitrogen. All right, next closest is argon. AR for argon. Boom, nice and charged. 
has its optimal pressure. And finally, we can get what we've been looking for in all three of our time periods. Dispense. And we can get some pure oxygen. Nice and full. Excellent. Now, I kind of wonder here. We have that gas canister there, so if we were to go and recall and try to get rid of that issue... Agent 5, Protocol 37, initiated time travel disabled. Return unauthorized item to original location. Okay, okay. So, despite the gas canister being something that isn't from this time period originally, it was here when I got here. So that also falls into my jurisdiction of I can't do anything with it. So that means... Unfortunately, it's going to be back in its intake. <sighs> Gotta put it back, but that also means I have to put on my gas <laughs> oxygen mask again. Oops. Alright. And that means we have a full oxygen mask, as well as we have argon to use, as well as nitrogen to use. So I think we're pretty good to go. I totally feel like we could do NORAD right now, but I started in one time period pretty pretty well, because the other two, NORAD and World Science Center, I only went to the first two rooms. So instead, let's head back. Alright, back here, we're going to say it's time for this episode to come to a close, because next time, we're going to jump back to the Moromono Mars colony, and we're going to, hopefully, barring any more walls, we can finish it up and finish up our first rip. See you next time, everyone.